Kobe. Like it is a, a very All right, check this out. Yone picked sure, early. One of the things that's made Yone as dominant as dominant as he yeah, has been is because of the matchups and the way drafts play out. I don't know that he's in the blue one. I need to pick this champion spot. They importantly give Jax Aurora, and then I have I take huge umbrage with LNG's next draft pick, Sejuani. Great, that's fine. But Renekton is now self counterpicked into Jax. And you can no longer play for side to side split push. So now you're looking at this weird, like, compositional 1 4. Are you the dive team? Are you going to try to collapse? Is it going to be like a scissors composition where you're basically trying to do one of these or like uh, uh, hammer and anvil strategies where the Renekton's going to cut in behind and then you're going to have Sejuani and Yone puncturing in from the front? Does that mean that we're going to have like Rakan to follow it up? I love this block here from R4, the Rakan picked in their face and saying okay we understand that this is one of the most important champions that you could pick up right now i'm gonna pick it up for myself and we have ezreal again and this series largely comes down to two very good ezreal players so getting the ezreal first making sure that we have this it gives us the advantage because any sort of lane swap is going to favor us anyways and we can still take some level one fights if you bring someone like Jin. Jin notoriously weak, level one. Ezreal, very, very strong. Sort of hidden strength. Uh, so it's very, it's fascinating uh, where these drafts have moved to, but I don't like this Renekton pick. It looks like the team is going to be kind of low damage, and they are all AD, which means that Jax, Maokai, and Rakan are going to have a pretty easy time itemizing this game. And the, the value, I mean... Yeah, it's I don't see I don't see a team fight shape that works for LNG. It's got to be the hammer to the anvil, but that means that you're inviting yourselves into the Aurora Rakan combo with Maokai to boot, right? Like how how are you actually uh, manifesting the rest of this? We're probably going to get an abyssal mask from probably Maokai, but maybe Jax. We've seen it on Jax in the past, but he may not want to get it because of how important his split pushing will be on the side lanes against Renekton and Yone. They both have a little bit of magic damage, but it's not the sort of thing that you want to uh, get the Abyssal for that matchup. I expect it to be on the Maokai second after a locket, saying, hey, you want to bring the fight into us? Let's go. We'll, we'll uh, clamp it down with Aurora. So fascinating draft. Uh, I don't mind the way it started. Taking Yone to give Aurora and Jax is not the way I would like to start these drafts. But when you do, I'm certainly not going to follow it up with Renekton. Sejuani is fine, but get like a true counterpick that can shut out the, the Gragas and then play for a dominant bot lane. And say, okay, I'll, I'll hard counter you. Uh, you know, Poppy's not always making it through the band stages, but you want champions that are just going to be nice and chunky, hard for Jax to deal with. And Gragas, like that Gragas Jax matchup is unplayable. You cannot beat, you can't play Jax. There's nothing that you can get off uh, because anytime that you try to counter strike, he can always just belly bop you out. He's never going to get stunned. Anytime you jump in, he just resets it away. He's got sustain. It's a heavy winning matchup for him. All right, Conqueror Renekton. So he's he's going to say, I can take this fight. If you go grasp, I can take it to you. That must be what the strategy around the draft was, that Sejuani is going to go camp this lane and that we're playing for a Conqueror Renekton carry. I don't know if they're going to get that. But this man is a man you doubt at your peril. I mean, I completely agree. It's, uh, and it in, no signs of lane swaps. We've got guards. Now that we've seen exploits to level one plays. And uh, very rarely do people put him as best mid laner all time alongside that of Faker. Because it's hard to, it's understandable. Because he hasn't got what they truly covet, the world championship. Yep. Yep. And so here, this run so incredibly important to Xiaohu because it was a rough summer for him. A rough year, so. If they're able to keep this streak alive, these Weibo miracle runs that people have, honestly, you should be getting used to these by yeah. now. Last year, Worlds, in playoffs, like you're mentioning, see if Weibo can keep the magic.
alive. Double range is always going to be favored here in this mid lane. Interesting how close Aurora was willing to get there. I wonder if it was a little bit of a bait out. Ooh, a big mistake there, stepping up into the empowered Q from Renekton. But still, like we said, this double range into double melee is a huge win for Weibo Gaming. Uh, basically, Renekton and Yone are going to be trading their HP bar to try to use their AoE abilities to get this wave. The problem is, now that you've done the most you can, there's you don't have anything left. Now you have to recall, and this wave gets frozen. So, mid, already won for Weibo Gaming. If Jax can survive this dive here, then that's going to be two points of strength, and we've seen over the course of the history of games, two points of strength is enough to have a significant chance of winning your games. You don't always need to go for three. You need two points where you can say, I am better than you. Then that allows you to play on the other side of the map. So what that looks like. Hold on, we'll wait for this little fight to trade out. Scout coming back in. He didn't teleport, so he didn't lose tons to get back to the spot. He ended up just trying to break up the freeze, but now he has to leave, and the freeze is there. So, Aurora has a win. If Jax is able to take his experience lead and fight it into Jin here, the bot side, then two winning positions means that you necessarily have Pryo on this part of the map as well. That area becomes yours because you have two winning positions. We'll see if they can leverage that. Uh, they have step number one, which is mid advantage. Now, topside, they get uh, Ezreal into Renekton. I really want to highlight Tarzan though, because it's these small things. Both sides of this matchup being played, um, Aurora, Aurora, Yone. So much all in threat to to the favor of Yone, but so much poking ability from the Aurora. These guys at that at this level, they are using her passive, and it's what the you know one of the most nerfed parts of this of this kit but it needed to be because they are constantly going for the three hit passive trying to get that extra stacking regen maokai coming over is hovering the ezreal ezreal happy to play into this renekton right now with this resource lead renekton's low enough that it's not really a threat we also have biscuits uh, popped up so one of them being used already saves another one at the four minute mark one flash down weiwei does find it they break the freeze. Finally, they get in the full reset. Yone had to teleport, though, with just refillable. So Aurora is going to come back now with her teleport and be much bigger. And this is where I expect to see that lead that they built for themselves at level one in that range versus melee to really play itself out. Ezreal is also going to get a better buy off in here. Jin is good on the rotations. I love this. Anytime you have syncopated recalls, you're never going to get this in your solo queue games, by the way. But anytime you have syncopated recalls, just let the team that recalls first go to the wave that's going to crash in right there's other levels to this especially when it comes to like where do we crash where do we play for a tempo play do we push through mid and then go there's a we've talked about it many times we won't go over it again here but when you get that recall off first from the ad carry and you can bring them back to the lane that you want first then you can accelerate their snowball and that's something that you can get for yourself so i really like the movement by lng if there's a weak side, if there's a weakness to it, it's that they had to play their cards first, which means that Weibo gets to answer in the way that they want, which in this case right now is a Jax that has about 500 gold in advantage over Renekton in their inventory, which is huge because it's already a counter matchup as well. And you have Ezreal, who is able to buy double longsword as opposed to the Swifties. So Ezreal is going to be stronger in an all-in fight as well. And we have Aurora. So now we have three winning lanes. Remember, we said two points of strength was enough to start taking over the game. We have three winning lanes right now at this moment from Weibo Gaming. So how much can they take from this point in the map? It probably means that they get the Void Grubs. It probably means that they're going to get some more plates. And we probably will see a snowball from here. But who knows, right? There's always there's always that you got to play the game element remember when i when i said that lights positioning in the fights was kind of suspect and that that was their only real point of weakness and that they played an otherwise pretty clean game one and they could easily be in a position where they could have 3-0'd they could have also they could also be in a position with how close these games have been that they might have even probably not 3 but um the games have been close enough, but largely it's been light being slightly mispositioned or egregiously mispositioned. By giving him Ezreal, 
you, you take that away, right? There, there's a high mobility champion now. You can say, let's play to this. This is my champion strength. Hold on, we get Renekton diving into the wall. Jax is trying to do something on bot side with the proxy. Uh, Weibo should just be able to get this. This should have been a non-contest from LNG. Remember we talked about three winning lanes and that these Void Grubs were theirs? This was a foul by LNG. Uh, well, Rakan gets the experience. It's it's a you know it's not as much as getting the kill, but the experience matters a lot as well. Uh, you can't go contest this. That's this is just a narrative blunder. We talk about this. This is when your shot calls don't match up with your team's win condition or your team action. So a narrative blunder is we have three losing lanes. That means necessarily that we give up the next objective. And when you give up that objective, you try to turn one of those weak lanes or two of those weak lanes into points of strength. And then you can kind of play like a game of dominoes or like, uh, you know, pinball. Like what are the reactions that happen in that spot? By going to try to contest when you have three losing lanes, you don't get into position in time. There is nothing that you can you can do proactively there. You have to be reactive and you have to hope that they make some sort of slip up that you can go punish and get a bigger effect. They will always win because their prize is better than your prize, right? You're going to get a favorable wave state, maybe a better rotation uh, to the whatever's next, a little bit better vision. That's not going to be as good as whatever's inside the pit. But you have to give it. You cannot go for those fights unless you have some sort of definable advantage. And they just don't have that right now. So a narrative blunder. We'll see We'll see whether or not that dooms them. Because honestly, this game is looking very difficult right now. The draft, I hated the Renekton pick. You're trying to create Renekton as a point of strength. And yet... He gets into the into the 0-1 position. Now he's playing against Jax, who counters him and is bigger in every way. This like ugh, feels really really hard to play this game now if you're LNG. I'm trying I'm trying to find something like I don't know I don't think there is a way. Maybe Yone getting as big as possible, but Randuin's is already going to be insane. It's going to counter the Sounded Sky that's coming from the Renekton. It's going to counter part of the kit from Yone, and it's going to counter Jin, uh, Jin's build in its entirety, especially fourth shots. So that Randuin's Omen is going to carry a ton of value. You've got... You've got Ezreal that's going to be very difficult to, to latch onto, and you've got three losing lanes still and or again. Right, like there is no big point of strength and it's going to be too easy. You don't have a credible magic damage source. This, it feels like it was a huge punt to not to not get Gragas. Sejuani Gragas would have given you more AP, would have let you break up the fights and, and find the skirmishes that favor Yone much more, plus just a hard counter to Jax. Nice bait. Counter strike into into a uh, flash. Wow, very nice. Hu huge bait by LNG. Maybe they thought that they would be. Like, I'll give them credit for it. I'll give Weibo credit that they probably knew what was happening. So no real damage done aside from losing his flash. They say, you know what? They're probably baiting me. Let's go take this fight anyways. I've got Counter-Strike available. I'll make sure to keep it. You saw Rakan was there hovering for the play. I mean, this is what they invested their whole draft into. Top three picks, Renekton, Sejuani, and Yone. You know, so much... We'll be talking right now about the same thing, right? Those three picks not giving you the source of advantage that you want is a problem. And a lot of it came down from that, that adaptation to send two people mid during a lane swap. Looking forward to... And to volunteer yourself into melee melee against ranged range, a big problem. Nice W flash there from Maokai. They say we can get the pick on the squishy Nautilus. Oh, he does get an ult off, so that delays the pick. Crisp should just be taking this at this point. This fight is splitting apart. Supportal combat. He may not have enough here. He's trying to set it up so that he has another W. They try to bait the effect, and you know what? Look at this. He goes far enough, but he has it at the end. Now he can jump out. This is best case scenario for Weibo. Fights in multiple directions. Yone, Yone not getting anything on the other side. Aurora happy to just bleed out this damage on the other side. 
who finds another that was fun to watch uh crisp versus hong crisp we can always rely on trying to take the most out of whatever situation you give him they get to their four grubs they're gonna grab an extra one Five lng two weeks off didn't come up with anything special out of their advantage their advantage was that they could have cooked they could have come up with some some dr creative draft answers not only do they not come up with a creative answer but they bury themselves in this draft so it's uh you know there's so many elements to the game there's so many things that that all of these teams can look to to maximize and we're starting to get more teams willing to draft for composition rather than drafting for just meta strength but the difference between a champion that two percent of a champion being strong or not is not enough as long as this to give away your entire draft compositionally right your team needs to have a game plan there needs to be something that you can call a point of strength jack spades out first round of uh spells he's gonna go back in while he's using his mana oh they got his ultimate renekton did not need to cast that jacks was out of mana so there was no real threat of of a dive there you can always respond right if maokai actually casts his w on you that's when you turn it on we teleporting back in and this is the problem now your dominus is gone they come back in and now they're going to go china style full speed full all the time all right jin is going to have one of his best situations but this is a what static shift start with nothing else that i've seen I think he's only on static shift and if that's the case he just deals no damage in this fight unless he can get a kill if he gets a kill that procs the lightning that's going to give a lot of damage it's kind of crazy that you need to get a kill to get your like highest source of burst damage the party in the bottom lane is actually going to move over to the mid lane. Tarzan running Israel, where are you going, my man? Towards his he... carry, but he gets snared. To a minion. He got snared just in time. Instead, he goes to Tarzan. And Gala will reload and then put a shot in the back of the tree and find another for LNG. Okay. It's two I don't know how they ended up in these two directions, but again, right? The split comes. But the always, always going to be true. Still significant. More plates secured on the bot side of the map. More kills. All right, so here we go. Teleport in, keeps the minion alive. Also, the Dominus is ending. Aurora keeps them trapped in right at that moment. You've got... Was that a Malignant's Rush that I just saw? All right, you're still good. You don't need to take anything else. This is pretty far. But you can go for more, right? If you go for more, you absolutely want it to be on prior targets. Neither of these champions are prior targets is the big issue. Also, because they jumped out of range, it means that Jax is dying, which is what you don't want. So you've just traded your top laner for a jungler support. It's not worth it. Not all, not all dives, not all kills are created equal. You do not want to be... You don't need to go and force a second round on that dive because their carry's already dead. So just get back out onto the map and start getting more resources for your carries and then you'll you'll win over time more often that way. All right, Rift Herald, we're going to get 300 experience coming in from this plus the push. Turrets are still up. We'll see where they decide to go for it. They're giving Dragon. If they if they catch wind of Dragon being taken right now, they might drop it right away in mid lane because they've got Aurora with ultimate up. She does have the Malignants and the Lucid Boots, so she might be looking for a flash engage. And if they drop it right now, then they can go for cross map or they can go for two in a row because they see Yone on the map. You see this? They don't drop it. I feel like this is a this is a miss. They're going to be happy to scale, so they're not they're not looking to rush anything. But that was an opportunity to get an extra tier two turret off. Uh, instead, they say that we don't want to give Yone that many more resources. Let's just go cut him off and play for our own bot lane turret. Weibo have demonstrated a level of play that we didn't get to see from them in the Swiss stage. The question is, can they maintain it? We've already talked about LNG are not a team you can afford to underestimate. And this top side is going to be crucial in allowing them to find an angle back into this game. I'm going to take a moment. Check out the map here. We've got the respawns. Three minutes and four minutes. There's a lot of wards and a lot of pressure being used on the spot side, which usually just means that you're going for the spot lane turret. 
But we've seen some scripted answers, right? So look at this. Five people converging, saying, okay, we know that you're going to go for this. This is our chance to get the fight that we want. And they're actually going to look for this engage. Nautilus actually giving the Maokai a route out. They've chained CC'd him right now. He gets to lock it off, which lets him get his ultimate. It's not going to be that much in the grand scheme of things. But Breathe says, you know what? I can take the rest of this. You put all your cooldowns down on my support. I can jump in and I can carry. And he's going to clean up this fight, guys. Multiple shields from the Rakan. You see that value? Hold on. They get the kill. Yone was able to check to get just enough of a chip of damage in. But they're still going to clean up the fight. Wavo turned the fight around. Breathe with unparalleled confidence. Dark Four versus five, guys. But remember, Maokai got all of his rotations off, including his locket. And the amount of spells that were used to capture him. This has been the story of this world. We've seen it every single time. Anytime you can go plus three in cooldowns, then you're probably can have a W. The next thing that we see is anytime that we see like three spells being used on a jungle or support, any form of tank, if cooldowns are being used on those against those positions, then you can go win the fight because all your gold is on the other people. You don't care if your support dies. And specifically in this case, Maokai got all of his cooldowns out and lock it and ultimate hold people in place that's enough of them of mo that's enough momentum for your team to come back in to take the rest of that fight now the tier two down another thousand gold into their pockets lng is in a lot of trouble see it on their face now how do you muster I'll take a quick moment to point out if you're a coach on either team you prepare for level five for rent for game five you do not put any stake at all in this moment where you're watching the game from your coaching booth you do not care about the result of this game you only start preparing for game five because if it's Weibo you're gonna say all right something must have colossally collapsed let me make sure that my team is in a good headset headspace and that I'll be able to reset them that we're playing better we will we can come together to win five if we're LNG we can reset after the high emotions of thinking that you're about to get knocked out but then somehow coming back to win either way Way, you prepare for five you don't cheerlead game four and we see it a lot from these coaches that they are super emotionally invested in the in the play at hand what's going on as a coach it's your responsibility to think about how am i going to communicate to my team the next step you don't need to be a cheerleader right now if the game ends and you get knocked out so be it if the game ends and your team moves on so be it you have a week to talk about the, those situations you only have 15 minutes, not even, to talk about Game 5 adjustments. That's why it's super important in these moments to be thinking about what if we need to get to this. And this gold lead the Weibo have is pretty damn massive. 5k ahead, Weibo collapsing on this... Uh, this should be the last moment that Weibo goes to the bot side of the map. They're probably just setting up some amount of vision for the Jax to push because this turret is gone. Means that any amount of pushing forward could get him strung out. Uh, but if you're Jax, you just say, I'll push it a certain depth, right? I can push it to this two-thirds depth and then step back. There's really nothing that they can do about it. I hard counter the Renekton. They would need to send probably three champions down to me uh, to make it happen. Otherwise, Sejuani would have to get a perfect... Chain CC lock onto the jacks to have any amount of chance at that, and there's just not enough damage. Right? There's there's just not enough there. You've got grasp. You've been stacking it all game. Your ultimate stacks, uh, giving you two sources of the extra resistances. There really is no pick on jacks available, so he's going to play with a lot of impunity. They may even send him to solo. They might send him to solo this dragon while the team prepares for the for the Baron. That's what I would do, right? You, Jax knows that he's so strong. He can just come over here, pull this Drake into the bush that's out, just outside the pit. It's the ocean map, and then your team can start playing for mid prial. We start controlling this area of the map, and and essentially you want to start encroaching even more and more. And then Jax can take this with the threat of being able to flank in behind because of what's already exposed on the map uh if you're lng and you're trying to find a way out of this boy it's gonna be tough it's still gonna be that hammer to anvil approach where you get renekton uh but that's gonna be really difficult with renekton stuck stuck just picking up all the waves that jacks leaves behind 
fight the final hurdle, but the penalty. You don't really have enough damage for an upfront pick unless it includes the Yone. Jin has gone for Static Shiv into Mortal Reminder. Seeing all the healing that's coming through on this. Uh, one thing that people have not been speaking about as much as they should is this font of life these teams have been stacking font of life and using it to keep themselves healed up in these long fights in their sights they have the advantage they have the setup control around baron it's a big part of what's making these teams scale into into end games if you've got this big aoe team fight all it, all it takes is one effect to slow somebody to get that proc going off and then your font of life plus in some cases revitalize is going to be going off for your teammates like with this recon must really feel the pressure with their tournament lives on the line they're fishing for that play Two items finished for Scout. Bear in mind, the farm for Xiao, who has not been great this game. And as a result, the Randuin's Omen. We said it would be picked up after the locket. Um, that's the probably the end of Maokai dying. Right now is the one and LNG. Aurora is huge. Moving Ezreal's huge. And Jax is not huge, but he's way big compared to the Renekton. So uh, I don't see I don't see where this angle is going to come back in for LNG. You don't have any crit built yet on Yone, and you have the worst crit item built on Jin. Uh, so at least the Randuins is not getting tons of value right now, but it's just going to get worse and worse. It's going to be more and more value. Uh, we're going to see more and more of these sigils coming out from the Jacks, well, the Bruisers. I wouldn't be surprised to see a Seeker's Arm Guard come out from Aurora before they really look to force for their fight. Um, Bramble Vest picked up on Maokai, knowing that he's the most likely to be caught. Uh, he is the furthest one forward in most of these situations. I always love watching Shahu on the split push, too, because he's so careful. It's interesting, uh, Rakan also knowing that he might be one of these sources of getting picked out. Since they have a fairly light, we'll call this a light front, right? This is a light front when you have double range into light front. These are not full, full tanks, although Maokai, you know, pretty close. Uh, just because of the economy that you're on, you can't get into that full tank status the way that a top laner can. This light front means that you do absolutely need to build these tankier items because otherwise your team can't stand their ground. So really good team game plan, right? We talk about the team narrative multiple times. This is what it's like to play with your team narrative in mind. There's a deep control ward on the top side to allow LNG access to the river at least, but that is a dark river. LNG don't see anything and Weibo are going to use it once again. All right, there's the presence. They say they've got enough. We've got mid prio, slide it over. We've got vision advantage. You can walk into us. Yone is one of the best champions in the game to check against that. Uh, first step, not bad from LNG. They're actually able to get a huge chunk out, but the whole time, look at this. This has been leashed the whole time. Have they actually realized it? Big fight coming out. Renekton's able to def deflect some amount of the damage. Light's able to hold himself a good position in the fights. He jumps away from the Yone as he goes forward that's huge means that there's no continuation now they just need to kite well in the fight and they're going to be strong here Ong dashing away making sure he can't get hit one lightning proc here could be a triple kill from the Jin. gala didn't realize it perhaps not not thinking he could get it or thinking that his life is important but honestly he probably could could have suicided to get two kills there and uh that would have been ill worth of this pickup right here not gonna be enough in this fight though crisp is just gonna hold him into position doesn't have the ultimate he's they just wait till they get the reinforcements come back out we saw the seekers arm guard remember we talked about that they would feel good as soon as they had that item that's exactly when they fought seekers arm guard on aurora Kobe's been saying it for the whole There's the reposition on the Ezreal, right? No Don't get caught with that big wall on your side. Tanks on the left, position right here. That's a fine position because if they try to sneak past you, the tanks can reposition and you get a really good hourglass shape to your team fight, right? They come sneak in here, then you just close the door and you end up with this hourglass or dumbbell formation. Right, Jahu getting a little bit chipped right here. He was giving himself the option to jump to the other side of this fight. 
opts not to take it, closes, cancels out the R. They've got the Baron. Now they're gonna push up. There's even gonna be one connect here. No. Good job by Hong though. You like that? Steps up in front of his teammates so that he can block the root and he buffers the Q so that it will still send him through if he's getting rooted. But it was the end of the range. Uh, just about 10,000 gold. Kobe's talking about soul point like it matters right now. Guys, do not lose a game over soul point. This third dragon is inconsequential compared to the power of the Baron. And they will go because of the amount of deaths and HP leads that they generated for themselves here and the fact that the jungler is dead right that is why they're going to go here but notice that the carry goes here Jax is not you it's not the whole team beelining to this dragon it's go up you get mid prio first push this up and then you come up and you control this area once it's controlled all it takes is a little bit of a push that little push forces the enemy team to decide ah, okay they're not giving us the big fight that we want and if we wait here forever they're just going to push up mid so let's go back and pick up the wave there you go you've bought yourself 15 seconds and that 15 seconds is enough to go pick up the dragon for free it also didn't cost you any amount of the pressure in mid wave they re ping pong the wave back to you you take it you pick it up you push again and now you've got this strong uh, point of strength where they're going to drive a wedge now into this northern quadrant Look for the for the rakan to try to do that uh correct answer is to try to engage on the three when they're by themselves but look how tanky this maokai is guys this Maokai is basically on top lane economy based on how far ahead in the game they are, so uh, no one's getting through him, plus that random zone just makes him invincible, which goes into what we talked about with the bad draft here from LNG. Uh, but he does get one. Oh my goodness. There I was, checking off the left side, and I don't see the highlight play. Go figure. Maybe I spoke too soon? <laughs> that uh last that breath you know they might be that last breath gold, but it's at the cost still let's the see so here's the play looking forward you're trying to engage in you're trying to get some amount of picks somewhere ultimate onto ezreal goes off to the side gets into the bushes malachi peels for as long as possible aurora is ripping into them the whole time can reposition herself to the backside if she wants up getting locked up reposition on the fight right to left now you're okay you're still good right chasing renekton here here's the problem Jumping over this wall, you want that kill, but boom, you jump in. All three of you are now in line for the Yone to scoop up, scoop, dunk, and score. So nice. And the, guys, look at those shutdowns. You see those golds popping up? Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> he did the same thing I did. <laughs> guys, that was us. We were the same thing. Oh my god, it's like, yes, yes, here we go, start cheering. Nope, gotta let's dot our eyes, cross our T's. That's, uh, that's been the Weibo way, though. Quite like crazy. Alright, Breathe can last for a very long time. Remember, this was an easy to itemize game as Jax. He can go in, he can just take this fight, absorb the damage. Here comes the ultimate with three members. So it's super stacked for resistances. Now, all that lifesteal starts to amplify and amplify and amplify. Now, this is really clustered, right? They're all together, keeping their form together. This is should be really good for Renekton, but because of how weak Renekton was in this game, there's just not that much, and all that's left is Gala, which means he gets eaten alive, and Weibo does close it out. Man, that was an exciting series, but Weibo playing really, really well, but making a lot of coin flips. So, really, they're just like 60-40 on these coin flips. That could be the difference between winning and losing a series. I do like how they drafted in all of their games, so I really love seeing uh, these type of drafts, and it's going to be exciting to watch them in the semis.